What's up guys? So I am taking another shot at figuring out sumo deadlifts. I gotta win this time. I'm going to get the job done. I'm going to be able to pull sumo successfully. And the biggest reason I'm confident in saying this is my outlook on training and my understanding of recovery, pain, injury, etc., has progressed so much that since the last time that I really gave sumo a shot. And although I'm not sure that my sumo will end up being stronger than my conventional, I am sure that I will get to the point where I can pull a max effort sumo from the floor and not have a hip fuck off. So what are the biggest changes in how I'm setting up my programming right now versus the last time I tried sumo, which was 2020-ish? Well, first off is my frequency is way higher. And I think that part of the mistake that I made with my last attempt to train sumo is I would only pull sumo once every week or even every two weeks. I would do a lot of work in that single session and then it'd be like two weeks until the next session. So it's like I was smashing myself having two weeks session to session where I wasn't doing any of it. I wasn't doing anything to prepare for that next session. And then I'd come in, smash myself again, and wonder why I felt stiff, wonder why it felt worse, wonder why things got beat up. So now that I'm running a higher frequency, it's giving me more opportunities to not only practice the movement, but build tolerance to the movement with submax work. And kind of beginning to understand now that with the higher frequency, it's no longer so important to really push all of that hard in a single given session if that isn't the goal of the session. If the goal of the session is just to build position, is just to build flexibility, is just to build tolerance to that movement, is just to bring up my adductors so I can handle pulling sumo, that's what the goal of the session should be. It shouldn't be to hit as much volume as I can handle in a single bout because the single bout doesn't matter right now because I'm too shitty at sumo for the single bout to matter. I need to first establish the ability to do it before I can worry about what I'm doing in a session. I just have to take what's there and make sure that I'm building session to session, progressing session to session, and making each session productive towards the end goal. So like I talked about in the previous video, I've kind of split the West Side style template up into four days, hitting four times per week frequency per lift. So here's how I'm laying out the sumo stuff right now. You probably can't read my chicken scratch on the whiteboard. I really don't give a fuck because I'm gonna talk about it anyways, but it is here. So how I'm laying it out, Sundays, it's going to be submax rep work and I'm doing it with the purpose of gaining position, gaining flexibility and building up my hips to handle sumo. The movement I'm running right now is a sumo imitation belt squat. And the goal here is to just replicate my sumo stance, replicate the pelvic positioning as best I can, and then lower myself into the bottom of the belt squat, try to find a stretch in the adductor, try to find a stretch in the hips, hang out there for half a second, and then reverse out of it strong. Now, as I go rep to rep, I can get a little bit further each rep. As I go set to set, I was getting a little bit further each set, and things felt really damn good by the end of it. I wasn't pushing heavy, only had two plates per side on the belt squat, which ain't much, but again, that was what I needed to get the job done. And on this day, there's no need to push things crazy right now. Tuesday is gonna be like a submax kind of air quote dynamic effort day. I'm gonna be pulling full range with bands. Part of the reason of the band tension is I still want to have to work hard through the range, but I really don't want to expose that bottom end with a lot of weight right now. I want to take time before I start pulling heavier full range. So bands, light on the bottom, heavier at the top, get the job done there. And again, just grease the groove, full range, work pretty hard, but don't overstep what I'm able to do on the given day is the goal. Wednesday is gonna be another submax positioning and flexibility day. On this day, I'm gonna be doing halting deadlifts where I know like there's a lot of people that call a Boris dead a halting dead where you're pulling the bar from the floor to your knees, setting it back down. That is not what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm doing. That is a Boris deadlift or I don't know, Chico. We all suck in North America. Don't know what the Russians are doing. So we just call that 
pull two knees, a Boris dead, some people call it halting. That is not what I'm doing here. What I'm doing on this day is I am pulling a full deadlift rep. I am lowering it to just about an inch, half an inch off the floor. And then I'm going to be holding that position for a two to three count and then reversing. Again, this is just building up isometric tolerance at that bottom end. It's gonna help me establish our position. It's gonna help me with building the sensation of pulling slack. And it's just gonna help build the tissues up to handle that bottom end, to handle that hip rotation, to handle that abduction of the hip. And over time, it's gonna build me up. I don't need to go heavy here. It's just really greasing the groove, establishing position, establishing flexibility. And then Friday is gonna be my heavier or air quote max effort day. I'm not going to be going anywhere near a true max effort right now, just because I don't want to overcook things before I'm prepared for it. I'm gonna keep the RPE probably in a seven to eight-ish range on this day. And I'm gonna do impartials. I'm going to start out with a wagon wheel deadlift. There isn't anything special about the wagon wheels other than because the wagon wheel is lifting the whole setup off the ground. I can just slide plates on really easy, whereas like a block pull, I'd have to pick up the bar, slide the plates on. So the wagon wheel isn't anything fancy. It's just me being lazy when wanting to load up plates. So don't overthink that. And on that note, I'm probably gonna run a three week wave, just wagon wheel. I'll probably run a three week wave wagon wheel standing on mats just to lessen the range of motion a little bit. And again, it's not like the wagon wheel is special. It's just that I would rather Put a wagon wheel down, stand on a mat, then do a block pull and have to <laughs> load plates the hard way because I'm a piece of shit. But anyways, guys, that is how I'm laying out sumo. And like, remember, it's my previous bouts of sumo. Yes, I was not able to do it well because I got a ton of hip pain that began affecting squatting. And it's not that sumo deadlifts are bad for my hips is what I've realized. It's that my hips were not prepared to pull sumo in the way that I was asking to pull sumo with the amount of volume and intensity I was handling per session, I wasn't ready to do it. So no fucking shit things hurt. This is how I'm planning on building up relatively slowly, building up tolerance and being able to progress through the movement rather than just running into a wall. And on that note, something else I'm doing on a daily basis, multiple times per day now, I usually go in Copenhagen's at least once every couple days outside of training. Now I'm doing it multiple times per day, every single day, just to make sure that my adductors are rock fucking solid. And so far, shit feels fantastic. Zero signs of anything bad happening. I know it really is probably too easy to comment that fully, but follow me on Instagram at Dr. Seth Albersworth. You'll see some sumo deads and yeah, you'll know if I'm full of shit because I'll be back to pulling conventional in if that happens, but you know what? Confident in my abilities to make this sumo stuff work. And like I said in the beginning, it's like, I don't know if sumo will end up being a stronger pull for me, but I at least want to give myself a fighting chance to be able to establish a sumo position and be able to actually use it rather than just going sumo hurt, sumo scary, I'm never gonna touch it. Anyways guys, thank you for watching. Hopefully you got something out of that. Peace. Oh, yeah, like, subscribe, share, all that bullshit. At Dr. Seth Elvis with an Instagram, at Activated Performance, and activatedperformance.net for our clothing, which we are really fucking low in stock right now. Sorry about that. We are working on a new drop coming out towards the end of the month. <laughs>